I think that was one of the goals of the exhibition, just to show that even if Proctor started his work as a visual artist quite late in his life, as he said himself, uh, at 40 years old, uh, having been a poet for almost two decades before that, we wanted to show that he never really abandoned poetry. He remained a poet, but using objects in space uh, rather than letters on a page. And I think the exhibition tried to take the viewer and to take him from 64 to um, uh, the last years of his life and to show how objects take a different role. Muscles, eggshells, uh, letters of the alphabet, all become like words that he, 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 act, he, he uses in different way every time the work is installed. Uh, so, uh, so I, we really very much believe that Brotas was a poet and remained a poet all his life. I think Dusseldorf was one of the uh, key cities in his life and there was Brussels, there was London, but there was also Dusseldorf where he spent many years, he lived here and he installed some of his most important works. Uh, as you said, um, the second part of his life as, as a visual artist was dedicated to uh, a form of fictional museum uh, that he took with him on the road. Every time he was asked to do a show, he didn't come as an artist anymore. So not anymore as someone who fabricates objects, but as a director of an institution. And he would set up a different department each time he had the opportunity to do so. And he did do so in Dusseldorf and in Kassel, uh, uh, very much showing the, the section des figures and, and allowing really people to fully understand the ambition and the goal uh, of, of the Musée d'Art Moderne. I mean, the most well-known section is the one with uh, objects all related to uh, the motif of the eagle. Uh, which is an interesting one because it just brings together paintings uh, but also uh, uh, objects made sometimes thousands of years ago uh, with a t-shirt and you know baseball cap or whatever you would find with an eagle on it and just to show that how a motif really became so present around us that maybe he lost every meaning. So we really, I really see the, the eagle a little bit like the letter A of an alphabet, something that you can associate with at that point with almost anything, power, authority, but also uh, games and, and childhood and freedom and ecology. So again, this idea that it has so many meaning that it doesn't have any meaning at the end. That's so about like freeing a motif from any direct association, very much like a poet, you know, as that's how poetry works. A word can be associated with multiple meanings at the same time, allowing every reading of a poem every time to be different. So th this parallel, I think, really uh, come, become ev evident when he, when he is able to give a full form to, to this museum, that Musée d'Art Moderne. And that would not have happened without him staying in Düsseldorf, clearly. Yeah, that's, that's a quite complicated uh, uh, question, in fact, because a palm tree is something that will become like the muscle, like the eggshell, like the letter A, like the eagle, very much associated to, to Proctor's pra practice. Every time you seem to see a palm tree in an art exhibition, you think it's a reference to, to Proctor's, and very much, in, often it, it, it is the case. But I think Proctor started using those palm trees in Brussels, you know, and, 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 and Brussels is a place where it's both unexpected, because it's exotic. I mean, a palm tree doesn't live well in, Brot in Brussels. It's not the climate for, it's not, let's say, a palm tree in Los Angeles, which would be just a daily life. In Brussels, there's something more extraordinary about it. But also something that refer back to the past of, of Belgium, you know, as a former um, colonial power. And you can see palm tree in Brussels sometimes engraved into architecture this idea that Belgium was an empire and would just control part of the world where the climate was very, very different. So in a way, it was a way for, to bring it back home and for Brotters to point to that very specific history 
and complex one. Uh, uh, and, and maybe the third association that we can give to, to, to the palm tree is Brotter's inclination to turn everything into a stage. So the palm tree is like a, it's like a prop, it's like you create, it's an instant decor. You bring a palm tree, you almost move, you know, the place where you are into a completely different uh, 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 lo 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 location. So it is kind of very subtle addition or intervention which can completely change the, the way people act in a space and, and turn it almost into a movie set. You know, a lot of uh, Brotter's uh, installation, including our not palm tree, were thought as places where you could shoot a film. And that's what makes Brotter so fascinating to is his relationship to film, you know, how the exhibition is a prop, prop for a movie. Like the final uh, uh, work is not the object or the environment, but the film which is shot sometimes at the end of the show or the day after the show. And that's going to happen uh, very regularly throughout his career from La Clé de l'Horloge, you know, homage to Kurt Schwitters, like his very first film and maybe his very first work, you know, to Decor, which also in London became the, the, the place where a, a, a film was shot. So I guess the palm tree play have different function, you know, have parallel function in, in his practice, but and, and, and are quite essential if someone wants to understand uh, the work uh, of Brotters. Yeah, there's a great form of humor in everything Brotters did, and I think uh, people's so somehow we lost sight of that. You know, he became such a, a precursor of institutional critique, of conceptual art. Uh, but at the same time, everything he did, you know, was, was charged with humor. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, himself, you know, would really inhabit the space and being very present and with his voice, with, you know, uh, the people he would bring with him. So all, all, all that we are trying to we try to capture it into the retrospective, just to show that the work was, was very serious work, which really, uh, uh, I think, I mean, is a key practice in the 20th century. There is a before and an after broadcast, but it's also a very playful one. You know, there is something where sometimes he didn't take himself as seriously as we took him. And, and the show tried to bring that element into uh, in, into our mind, and just in the same way, just to show that the work is is colorful, that the work is beautiful, that the work you know uh, exists physically in space, uh, uh, very much so. Often you see Breton through old photographs in a catalog, as if the work couldn't be restaged, couldn't be reactivated. So it's a bit, it's one of the ambition of the exhibitions to bring back that uh, nature of the work. Yeah, we really thought I mean, the exhibition was conceived by Manuel Borges Villal, uh, who is the director of um, Reina Sofia in Madrid, and myself. And, and we thought about this exhibition as something that, you know, it has a similar checklist. So the works are more or less the same, with some works which at the end cannot travel or needs to be substituted by another one, but mostly they're very similar. Uh, but we really hope that this show every time it would travel, would become a different exhibition. So I think it was even with the same work, and that's the, ma that, that's the magical aspect of Broadtas, even with the same work, I think the show was very different in New York and Madrid. You know, Madrid had more space, you know, it had completely different architecture. At the Museum of Modern Art, we build a space, so we try to customize the walls around the work, so we're able to show maybe a trajectory in Brotter's practice. Madrid is much more expensive, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful building, with, uh, it's an older building, so you have to work with the architecture. So you can bring much, we brought much more films, uh, much more installation. Uh, there was more maybe like a meandering in the exhibition than there were uh, in New York. And Dusseldorf for us was extraordinary to, 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 to bring the show to because it's so much a place where Protas, you know, as, as we mentioned, uh, um, lived here and, and made some major work. So we really wanted also to 
do something special about it. And one, uh, one of the uh, works that the, the, the exhibition Düsseldorf will reveal for the first time, and that was not in New York, neither in Madrid, uh, is one section of the museum, the 19th century base, uh, which was composed partially of work that brought us board from um, uh, from another institution uh, um, uh, of old master works that are restaged within his own practice and for the first time we're going to reconstitute that installation. So we really try to give a, maybe a stronger accent to the museum, the museum, the Musée d'Art Moderne, because Dusseldorf plays such an important role. So I think every show has a uh, 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 brings something else and, and allows the work to be redeployed uh, differently uh, in relation either to the architecture or the context of the city. You know, sometimes you organize exhibition and for the, with, with the goal in mind to be able to spend time with, with works that maybe you don't know very well or very rarely shown. And, and one work that I see from where I'm sitting uh, is, is Le Problème Noir en Belgique. Uh, so the black, black problem in Belgium, which is very early 63, 64 works. And that piece, which is so charged with political um, uh, uh, implication, uh, and so early in Brotter's work, which suddenly you can understand like how an artist think about himself within a larger um, art context, thinking about pop, for instance, but bringing a much darker imagery into the vocabulary of pop. For me, it's a work that I had seen once, uh, maybe uh, uh, 20 years ago, that I knew through black and white reproduction. Uh, so it was extraordinary to finally be able to find that work again and also to we were lucky enough to acquire it for the museum so to spend a long time with, 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 with that piece and it was one of those uh, great things that an exhibition can bring uh, allowing you to really spend time with a specific work which usually is almost hidden on, 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 on not at all on view so I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, it's with us and that I hope it will allow people to uh, understand differently the early work of, of Brotters.